Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to JBL, Golden Gap of the Day, Stocks with Show Play of the Day here. I really, really liked this gap today. I actually like this gap better than any other gap today. Uh, this is the one that I uh, was in favor of. And if you look here at this chart, let's just go over the bigger, bigger picture here first of this. All right, so you see the JBL rallied up here. This is years ago, I mean, back in 2005. The stock gap down here in 2006, and, and the chart was broken. Okay, this, this broke the chart. There actually probably was a gap up here, but this is really the end of the story for this thing here. Then it rallied up here, gapped again. You can see it went green on the day, but it was still a bearish gap and a good one too. Rallied up here again. Do you see this? Gap down again. You can see it. And this one worked very well as a short. Right up again here. Broken, 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 broken. This is all into 2009. All the mortgage stuff was going on. Everything was tanking the market, everything else. Stock tried to recover, but still didn't do it. Tried to recover again here. And then you can see actually right in here where the stock was really making an attempt. But do you see here that it failed? Okay, that this actually failed. The interesting thing is about it here that uh, this should have held. So the earnings, okay, that came out, it was last night and I saw this thing. It could have gapped up. It didn't, okay, but the stock could have gapped up to 25.26. And if it had done that, it would have been a beautiful gap and it would have been an immediate buy. Now it didn't, okay? And instead it gapped down. And what I loved about this thing, even though it was down a lot, I mean, from the night before where this closed here, look, 1972. 1972, it closed, it opened this morning under $16 and it never went above it. I was very aggressive in this today. Not just with size, but the timing of this considering the gap. And I said I didn't care. And I knew that it was going to work. And I knew that it was good because of the rating. And this rated 23 points. And actually, you know, this is lower. This is absolutely lower. I mean, this could rally back up here and still be lower. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if this broke and fell on through tomorrow. And mainly because the action here in the morning, which is I just did this in the morning, got all out. But this sideways action here is just total exhaustion. This isn't. This doesn't mean this move is done. It's the market rallied over the high of the day and had a huge bullish move with the minutes, and this thing could barely even move. It got a little bit over seventy, up to seventy-five. But this is this flatline the rest of the day. Just never had anything else to give. Why? Because it's not going to get bought. It's not getting bought. It's totally done for the day as far as the selling coming into it. The shorts got out in the morning. Then everybody was buying stuff in the afternoon with the market rally. Uh, but this is just tired. I mean, this thing is so tired from up here and then down here. And then the move it made hard, hard move in the morning, it's exhausted. It really should have gotten to 15 today, but it was just too tired. And then with the minutes that came out in the 2 o'clock period in the afternoon, it flatlined. And that is weak, okay? I must be clear on that. That That is weak. It is weak. It is weak. It is weak. Even though this closed with a small bodied red bar. The gap is bearish. The move this morning was bearish. The activity against the market this afternoon was bearish. I wouldn't be surprised at all, actually, if this continues tomorrow. We'll have to see. This had a thousand, almost a thousand. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a bit, a little bit. But it really had basically a thousand entries today. Any one of them that you did, or if you did ads in every one, which, which I did today, which I was so happy with my uh, play in this, worked, okay? Here's the first entry here, rallied up, second entry, next entry, rallied up, second, third entry, I guess this is, or fourth, this is here, and then another one here. So this is this had like 100 entries here. So you got to take it, you got to take it, you got to take it. It doesn't matter which one you do, but you have to do one. And if you do more than one and do ads like me, it's, it's a terrific thing. By the time this ran up here, though, and held, the stop must be lowered, and then it was. And... You know, this could have gotten to 15 today. The low came down here at 15.30. I did not get this down into 15.30. I did not get out at the low here. And I rarely get out at the low of something because I'm money management. I mean, money management, you take a great trade, you have size in something, you get the move. And I watch the time of the day. 
I, I'm very uh, precise with watching the time of the day. But actually, the stop could have been lowered here over 60 to get this down to 30. I mean, it really did hold 60 here, 1560, 1560, 55, look at that. But, you know, 30 was not a number anywhere. 1525 was a number. Really, 1511 was a target. 15, 1490. So, you know, sometimes stocks do make brand new numbers, numbers that they never had a spot on before. And that's okay. You, that's why you're trading. This is all in real life time. You're trading in real life time. You're making decisions in real life time to take the trade and where to exit it. You have all the numbers prepared and you have everything situated and down. And one of the first numbers was down in here. I mean, actually, one of the first numbers was 1564. It broke, came down, then 1550. It broke, came down. 45 was another number. It broke, came down. But, you know, sometimes something will hit on a number and you're like, wait a minute. And it's nothing that you had written down and there's no way you could have known it. But this is trading. I mean, this is trading. You're trading in real life time where you've got everything situated. But every once in a while, something will halt at a number and you say, why did it do that? This is why I'm saying I'm sure this goes down to 15 and breaks. I'll be watching this tomorrow to see what it does. It, this, this, this just had a lot of opportunity in here to get a position. And... I get a lot of conviction when something holds like this. I just have a thousand percent conviction then if there is such a thing because I just have the confirmation. This is confirmation, 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 confirmation. Every time it rallies up, it holds, comes down. Every time it rallies up, it holds, comes down. I mean, you know, this is a beautiful, beautiful gut. And to have something hold this week and hold the high of the day, the high of the day was set at 930. That's really, really great. So this is JBL. This is a beautiful, fabulous golden gap, bearish gap here. Uh, wonderful, fantastic day to do gaps and shorts. I mean, it just was one of those days where you could have actually done everything. You could have actually done everything. You could have done more than everything. There were so many things to do, and everything worked great, and the market came in in the morning before it flipped, and, and I knew the market would flip, and uh, I, I just like to trade the morning anyways, but you know, if you tried to short these things in the afternoon, it was it was not the day to be trading in the afternoon with the minutes announcement. And and if you did, the long was the play. So I find that typically stocks will go and make their lows around 10, 10, 15. And if something doesn't do it by then and keeps drifting down lower and lower and lower and lower and lower, it usually does by 12, 12 o'clock. It's very, very rare that something will make a set a new low into the close. Can it happen? Yes. Does it happen sometimes? Yes. It's an afternoon play or you're in a getting into play at lunchtime to get it down late in the afternoon. It's rare, though. Usually these things are done in the morning. That's one of the reasons I love to trade gaps, because you can make the money and just get on with your day and just be completely done very early and have your profit in and say, good job. Good job, Melissa. Did your job today. Did it well. You did everything right. Aggressive, had the gap rating, had the numbers, took the size, had the stop in, lowered the stop, and got out. So good job, everybody that did this trade with me, too, in the Stock Swoosh Show Live Trading Room. This is Melissa with the StockSwoosh.com. Email me at Melissa at the StockSwoosh.com if you'd like more information on anything I've got going on between now and the end of the year. I have the Holiday Room Special to sign out with 25% off discount. I have 50% off all specialty classes, which is the Trends class, the Wealth Manifestation class, and the Entries class. And I'm offering a special for pre-registration for the Golden Gap course for January 18th and 19th, 2014. I'm offering two months free in the live trading room for January and February if you pre-register by December 31st, 2013. So lots going on here. Just a lot of fantastic, great stuff. I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and I will talk to you soon.